In this video, I'll be explaining and demonstrating a couple of variations of the ulnar nerve glide. You should consider giving ulnar nerve glides to any patients with any of the following presentations. Number one, adverse neurodynamics of the ulnar nerve. Now, adverse neurodynamics is a very general umbrella term. It doesn't really have a whole lot of meaning. However, in general, if somebody has a positive ulnar nerve tension test, you would probably give them an ulnar nerve glide. Also, patients with post-concussion syndrome, so those following a mild traumatic brain injury, oftentimes after that injury, they develop adverse neurodynamics of all three of the major upper extremity nerves, median, ulnar, and radial nerves. Patients with numbness or paresthesias in the ulnar nerve distribution of the hand, and also those with peripheral ulnar nerve entrapment. Conditions where you might see that would be cubital tunnel syndrome and also Guillain's canal entrapment. Also patients with cervical radiculopathies and those with thoracic outlet syndrome. Now to perform the ulnar nerve glide, the patient will be positioned in sitting or standing. And if you're the patient, you're going to make an okay sign with your hand such that your palm and palmar side of your forearm are facing away from you. There's the okay. Turn my hand away. And now notice my palm and palmar side of the forearm are facing away from me over to this wall over here. Now to get to the starting position, position one, I'm going to tilt my head towards my hand and bend my elbow such that my middle finger touches the side of my head. That'll look like this. So tilt my head, bend my elbow a little bit. I might also have to extend my wrist a little bit, but notice the starting position, my middle finger is in contact with the side of my head. This is position one. Now from here, you're going to straighten your elbow such that your middle finger moves away from your head at the same time that you tilt your head away from your hand. Okay, that'll look like this. That is position two. My head is tilted away from my hand and I've extended my elbow now to take my hand way over here. Notice also I'm still trying to maintain a little bit of wrist extension there. Now, the ulnar nerve glide is just going to be an oscillation between these two positions. So there's position one, there's position two, position one, position two. And you're going to hold in each position maybe about one to two seconds and perform about 15 total repetitions per set. Here's a second way to perform that ulnar nerve glide. You'll start off the same way, make the OK sign, rotate your arm away, and my palm and palmar side of my forearm are still facing away from me towards this wall. However, in this case, I'm actually going to have the elbow extended, okay? And I also get a little bit of that wrist extension right here. And I'm still going to tilt my head toward my hand. This is position one. Now, in this form of the ulnar nerve glide, the movement's not going to be at the elbow, it's going to be at the wrist. So I'm going to have coordinated movement with my wrist and my head. So let's go to position two. I'm going to flex my wrist and tilt my head away from my hand. This is position two. No movement is occurring at the elbow. And again, I'm going to oscillate between these two positions. Again, hold about one to two seconds in each position, and it's about 15 total repetitions per set. Now, this might be a little bit too intense for some people, so what you can always do is you can lower the arm into a little bit less abduction. This takes a little bit of the tension away, and you can still glide in this position. And again, always follow this test, treat, retest model. So if you performed an ulnar nerve tension test and it was positive, you give this treatment, then retest on that ulnar nerve tension test. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.